All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I have for you guys today, Andrew Jacked made his long-awaited onstage debut. So Andrew, for those of you guys that don't know, he's Larry Wheels' training partner. He's heavily featured on Larry Wheels' YouTube channel. Um, and he's got an incredible physique, and a lot of people have been very impressed by what kind of physique he's built, considering the fact that he's never competed before. So he competed in this amateur show overseas, he ended up winning his class, he also won the overall at this show, and he earned his pro card with the IFBB Elite Pro in bodybuilding. So I saw a little bit of confusion with this because of the trunks that Andrew is wearing, and admittedly, they are pretty weird trunks. I gotta say, it is, it is kind of weird that in bodybuilding they would allow you to wear these type of trunks. They do look like classic physique posing trunks, um, but by all accounts, he did compete in the bodybuilding category not the classic category. And he earned his pro card in bodybuilding, not in classic. I guess just the fact that it's one of these overseas shows. I don't know. The trunks, I think, are very weird. So the other thing I wanted to mention, like I said, he turned pro. He earned his pro card here, but it is in the IFBB Elite Pro. And this topic of conversation has come up a little bit more frequently lately as we talked about Michael Crizzo, who is also an IFBB Elite Pro athlete. It is not the same as the IFBB Pro League, so you're not going to see Andrew compete at the Arnold Classic or the Olympia or any of the major shows over in North America that you're mostly familiar with. You're not going to see Andrew with these other big names that we're familiar with. It's different. It's a different IFBB. I know it's confusing. I know it's kind of stupid, but that's just how it is. Because I already know as soon as people see that he earned a pro card in the quote-unquote IFBB, everybody's going to be saying, how could he do on the Olympia stage? People are going to be asking me. Andrew Jack versus Big Rami, Andrew Jack versus Brandon Curry, etc., etc. Not the same IFBB. Now, the other piece of this puzzle is how did I think his physique looked? I actually think he looked really good based on the pictures that I was able to see. I have not seen video yet. Um, the pictures that I've seen, I think his conditioning could have been a little bit better. He almost looked better in some of the posing videos to me in the gym leading up to the show. He looked like he might have... Uh, maybe carved up, tried to fill out a little bit too much. To me, he didn't look as sharp as we saw in some of the pictures from him um, during his prep for the show. But again, I haven't seen a whole lot of pictures. I've only seen a few pictures, and I haven't seen any video. I think the other big concern was his legs. A lot of people were wondering how his legs were going to look. From a size standpoint, I think his legs look good. I think they could have used a little bit more separation, maybe a little bit more detail. That could have been brought um, from maybe a little bit better conditioning. But like I said, it's really hard to tell. Because personally, I just haven't seen enough pictures. There's only been a few pictures released in one of the pages that I've been looking at. This is actually his coach's page. This is Andrew's coach's Instagram page. Um, Jasim Alal. He seemed to have a lot more pictures than Andrew did on his page. And they also said in the caption that Andrew weighed 131.2 kgs, which is pretty impressive if true. That's 289 pounds. Now, I know that should be taken with a grain of salt because I think Andrew is like 6'2 or 6'3, which is really tall in bodybuilding terms. But overall, my opinion is that Andrew looked good. I think his conditioning could have been a little bit better just based on what I've seen so far. Maybe it was better. I would like to see some more pictures, but I think the conditioning could have been tighter. I would like to see Andrew in the IFBB Pro League, the Olympia IFBB, the Arnold IFBB, the Brandon, the Phil, the Rami, the Roly, this IFBB. Because those are the names that people are going to start comparing him to now they heard he's turned pro. And I just think there's going to be a lot of confusion there. Now, next up in the news, a strict curl story for you guys. It's been a while since we've had a nice, juicy strict curl story. Leonidas Arcona, the German strict curl legend himself, um, hitting a new PR on the strict curl movement. 105 kilograms, 231 pounds, which is his new personal record, making him within 20 pounds of the all-time world record of 249 currently held by Dennis Saplinkov. Now, I believe Leonidas admittedly said during this lift, his butt came off the wall a little bit, which as you guys know, um, your shoulders and your butt must be making contact with the wall the entire time for the lift to count in an official competition. But the crazy amount of weight to me makes it newsworthy and again makes it kind of within that striking distance of the current world record held by Dennis. 
But to me, watching some of the rapid progression that Leonidas has been making, um, I think he's definitely the guy to keep your eye on as far as the next up-and-coming um, world record strict curl champion. I think he's really going to be the guy to do it. He's super young, early 20s, making crazy fast progress, currently at 105 kilograms. I mean, the dude doesn't show any signs of slowing down on the strict curl. And he's already the holder of the German world record in strict curl, so it's only a matter of time before he moves on to the world record. All right, now next up in the news, I wanted to throw this one in there. WWE superstar Braun Strowman, a.k.a. Adam Schur 99 on Instagram, who's also sponsored by Redcon 1, by the way. He's been going through a pretty crazy physique transformation lately. I think he's down about 40 or 50 pounds in overall body weight right now. Um, and he posted a physique update that I thought was interesting, considering the fact that he still weighs about 340 pounds. He hit a front double bicep with a vacuum pose. So, granted, he doesn't have the greatest physique in the world. He's not a bodybuilder. He's a WWE superstar. He's a professional wrestler. I just thought it was interesting that a 340-plus pound professional wrestler could hit a vacuum pose. And probably 50% of men's open bodybuilders right now can't even hit one. And there's some people in classic physique that can't hit one. Now, next up in the news, let's talk about this upcoming New York Pro. So it looks like Hassan Mustafa is officially throwing his hat in the ring for the New York Pro. So it's not just the Blessing Nick and Justin show anymore. Hassan recently put up a physique update where he announced that he is six weeks out now from the 2021 New York Pro coming up in May. So it looks like... So it looks like Blessing and Nick are no longer the biggest and baddest names that are going to be in that New York Pro lineup. I think Hassan Mustafa is certainly a guy that needs to be... Uh, watched out for now speaking of blessing and nick there was another physique update from blessing awudabu awodabu posting an abs update again kind of that side crunched abdominal showing off the serratus and showing off the separation and detail that blessing has in the relatively tight midsection that he has for a guy of his size and then of course you had a recent physique update from nick you had a recent physique update from blessing so the result of those two physique updates of course is going to be a lot of back and forth between nick and blessing as captured here in this post by buys and tries highlighting some of the comments that were left on the two of these posts blessing says don't play with me ass man lol you need to find a way to make them quads longer because you're short af nick walker responds your legs are too long and your upper body is too short lopsided boy the stage will say it all. Boogeyman who, says Nick Walker. I'm tired of seeing the same old side ab shots. Let's see some quad shots. Nick really calling a shot there. And Blessing goes on to say, I'm the master and you the puppet. I tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. Remember that. Hashtag the Boogeyman show, says Blessing Oodaboo. So I think this rivalry is good and healthy, not too disrespectful. I think it makes bodybuilding more exciting to have a little bit of back and forth like this, to have a little bit of rivalry like this, to translate over to the stage and make things a little bit more interesting. That being said, I think it would be absolutely hilarious if neither Blessing nor Nick win this show, and somebody like Hassan or Justin that nobody is talking about comes in and wins the whole thing. That, to me, would be the funniest outcome of this whole thing, is if neither of these two guys even win. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Who will place higher, Blessing Nick or maybe somebody else? Please give this video a thumbs up if you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. As always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.